Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So as always, we want to hear what's going on. It's, it's funny, Joe, because, uh, you know, uh, I've been working with the new agents and the new agents say, well, you know, how do I learn the market and how do I know what's going on? And I said, I tell you what, one of the best things to do is tune in to our Wednesday morning sales meetings because Joe Donovan always knows the market and he's always going to give you an update. So when he gives that update, he's going to tell you basically what you need to be telling clients or, or people that ask you, how's the market? I said, he does that every week. So if you need that information, that's the quickest way to get it. So uh, without further ado, man, give us an update. Hey, hey, thanks, Anthony. I think we talked about a little bit before everybody jumped on, but yeah, I mean, uh, in reality, that is your job and that is my job. Uh, my job is to stay in tune with the market uh, especially the, the mortgage rate market and cost and trends that are, we're seeing in the mortgage market. Um, but you know, that relates directly to your guys' business too. So I have to, I have to watch that side of the house as well, uh, to, to help you guys, uh, and educate your clients. Cause I'm that second, that second voice that tells them that this is the right thing to do and you, you how much money this is going to save you over the long run. And, I'm there to prop you up. So, you know, when you're, you send a borrower my way, I talk to them and I say, even if I didn't think you were a great agent, Anthony, I'm going to tell them, oh man, you're working with Anthony. He is great. I am going to prop you up. You know, uh, that's my job. I'm the hype man, you know? So um, I'll tell you on the, the market wise, we talked about a little earlier, um, Atlanta Metro is just insane right now. Average days on market is 11. Uh, most properties are seeing uh, multiple offers. We're, we're talking about, we're almost getting into the triple digits uh, when a property goes available for sale on offers. Um, we're starting to see more and more blind offers with no contingencies. Uh, in fact, I've had five clients this past month uh, that wrote blind contracts, no contingencies, and then realized it wasn't for them. And they lost earnest money. Uh, earnest money in this area is 1%. So they're gambling $3,000, $5,000 on a property they've never seen with no contingencies just to have a chance. Um, it's, it's insane. Uh, it is a tough, tough market to be a buyer. Uh, you've got literally your agent has to be watching that MLS 24-7 and networking and networking hard. They've got to be talking to every agent of any prospective clients that they may or may not possibly be listing anytime soon. Um, what we're seeing now is, you know, we call it pocket listings, but agents that literally have a seller and have a buyer lined up before they even advertise it on FMLS or put it in the yard. Um, it's, it's insane. So we're seeing a lot of that. On the mortgage side of the house, um, over the last week, uh, rates dipped down a little last week with all the GameStop uh, mania. I don't know if you guys follow the uh, stock market, but the good old uh, Reddit and uh, Facebook and uh, I don't know, Twitter or whatever. And, but uh, it got insane. Some hot stocks got heavily heated. A couple hedge funds lost some, you know, millions of dollars. Um, it was, it was a wild market, brought a lot of insecurity to the market, which is why you saw that massive sell-off, uh, and movement into the bond market, which is great for rates. When they buy bonds, rates go down. Um, uh, this week we've seen that kind of course reverse, uh, FTC, Janet Yellen, they're talking about further regulation and, uh, calling, you know, who let the dogs out and they're going to sick the regulators on everybody now. And so, We've seen some of that activity kind of calm down. Uh, game stock has sold off from like $500, $600 a share down. It's under $100. It's, it's a $2.50 stock all day long, if that. They're about one month from going to bankruptcy. Don't, don't, get, don't get into the hype. Um, but so we've seen rates slowly start ticking back up uh, as people start moving back out of the bond market into the stock market. Um, but that last week, it caused a huge refi surge. So we've seen refis, all those people that were sitting there waiting, 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 trying to time the market for that perfect rate. And they missed out when the rate shot up. Um, 
that was their little window of opportunity. So I've seen a massive surge of refis last week. It was crazy. Um, purchases are still coming in for those that can win contracts. I'll tell you, I have, uh, I have more pre-qualified and pre-approved buyers out there uh, than there are properties probably in the entire state of Georgia available for sale. So uh, they're calling me every weekend, putting in multiple offers and their contracts aren't getting accepted. It's tough. Uh, rate wise, uh, VA loans, you're still looking at about two and a quarter. Uh, it's ticking up closer to that 2.375 range this morning. Um, I'm not sure if it'll cross over this week, but uh, historically super low still. Uh, conventional loans sitting around that 2.75, 2.875 range. And your FHA loans, depending on credit profile, sitting right in the middle, um, 2.2 to, to 2.4. So they're still excellent, still very low rates, still tiny. So, you know, um, it's still a great time to buy if you can get a property. Uh, if you haven't refinanced, you know, uh, this may be one of the last windows of opportunity right now. So your previous clients, it doesn't hurt to reach out to them and just say, hey, you know, you bought two years ago. It may or may not be the solution for you, but you probably want to talk to a lender. Um, see if, see if, run the numbers, see if it makes sense. So this may be one of the last opportunities. Uh, we're expecting that constant gradual increase in rates. Um, like I said before, I think we're going to close out 2021, probably in that three and a half range, um, may, maybe just a tick above it. Um, uh, but it's going to be that slow, steady, gradual climb. The Fed does not want to shock the market. So I wouldn't uh, expect to see anything too drastic. Um, they're worried about a lot of these different, uh, virus variants, uh, and the effectiveness of the vaccine. Uh, but we are, analysts are looking at, you know, the possibility around May, um, a combination of those that have already been infected and survived COVID along with those that will be vaccinated that by that point, we will reach some form of herd immunity, depending on how it reacts to these variations. So we, it is looking positive. Uh, we will see growth. I think the biggest thing, um, only thing that I'm on the watch for, which is not on the books right now, I'm watching Congress. Um, I'm, looking, I'm looking for inflation. Um, the inflation numbers are there, but they're not super strong. Um, and they won't be until we return to some semblance of normalcy. We'll never have normal like we knew before. Uh, and that's just the reality of it. I was talking with a viral specialist the other day. That's what she does for a living. And I mean, that the reality is we'll never return to what we knew before, but we will start to see some return to some sense of normalcy. Um, but things are going to be different for a long time. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm watching for inflation. Uh, and one of the big things that I think could spur inflation uh, and would have unilateral support is an infrastructure bill. So I'm, I'm watching what Congress is talking about very closely. If they start talking about massive infrastructure spending, uh, that is really going to, to stir up inflation very quickly. Because you're talking about trillions of dollars that are going to get flooded into local economies. Uh, you know, on these projects, roadways, bridges, and we're in need of it. Let's, let's be honest. And that's why it'll be a bilateral bill. It'll go through pretty quickly, um, but it comes at the cost of increased taxes. So somebody's got to pay for all this money we're spending on Corona. Somebody's got to pay for those roads. So uh, get ready for the tax hikes. It sucks. Uh, that 37% bracket ain't too kind to, to me. Uh, it's, uh, it's painful, but uh, that's what I'm watching for is inflation. Uh, the other thing is inventory on your guys' side. Uh, the biggest thing is builders getting that supply online. Um, materials are starting to get a little easier to get. It, 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 we still have a huge material problem, um, but it is getting a little easier. Like I said, as we return to that May time frame, some form of normalcy, some type of uh, systematic repair of our market, we'll, we'll start seeing um, that building inventory and supply pickup, uh, and that's going to help alleviate a lot of these um, issues with, uh, you know, demand exceeding supply, we hope. 
Yeah, and Jim, I think you had a question. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, uh, looking at uh, some of the bills have been signed lately. You know, the pipeline coming out out of the north. You know, they shut that pipeline down. That's two hundred forty billion people uh, billion dollars uh, plus. I think I think it was. I, f I forgot how, what the number was that's going to un cause unemployment rates up there to go unless they convert over to, to uh, the solar business and stuff, which is, will take a hell of a time to do. Already we see gas prices starting to spike because of that, you know. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of factors there too. But uh, one strategy uh, that I'm trying to do now uh, in working with Joe, I used to have Joe adjust my uh, if we have a buyer qualify for 300,000, we're bidding on a piece of property for 150. I had Joe adjust my letter for 150. Now I don't do that uh, uh, because I want the strategy now to show my buyer has got extreme power to buy. If I'm buying 150, you know, I'm going to turn in that letter for $300,000. Uh, I'll take the chance on the counter or whatever. But uh, the, the thing is, I think that that's another strategy in today's market to uh, one, get them pre-qualified two get them pre-approved because that again gives you a better strategy uh, to say you're pre-approved buyer instead of pre-qualified -pre uh, because some of the risk is, is already taken care of that way. You know, so we got to watch really strategy out. To, uh, uh, I don't believe in overbidding property. That's just something I will not do. You know, I will not have one of my buyers pay $10,000 over property value, you know, t today. Uh, I just don't do that. Uh, and if they want to do it, then that's fine. But, but I advise against it, but, but, uh, of course, eventually the market will come back around and we'll be able to buy something. But, but that, that's just a strategy that I'm using today. So, so you're saying, hey, you Jim, I'm glad you brought that up about the pre-approval. So I do do full, uh, loan approvals as well. So, um, you know, what I would recommend all clients do it. Not everybody wants to, uh, but I highly encourage them. Like if, if Anthony were playing with me today, I'm going to go ahead and build out his portal and request all of his documents. He uploads his documents. I submit it to underwriting. I don't have a property, but I'm going to go ahead and submit it to underwriting, get everything underwritten, conditional loan approval. And I'm going to send you a letter from the underwriter stating that you're fully approved minus property, title, appraisal, <laughs> you know, and whatever conditions she has. Um, if it's one of those that they're they're really fighting for multiple offers, if there's any of your conditions other than property appraisal title, I can get those conditions, return it back to the underwriter and get you a clean letter. So that way you're submitting an offer that says you are fully approved as long as you get a property with clean title and it appraises. Done. And that also and cuts down on the loan process. You can move too. a lot quicker. Yeah, it cuts down on the number of days to to closing. So, and that and that's an advantage if you know to some sellers, if everyone's writing, okay, we're going to close, you know, March fifteenth, and you got somebody that says, well, hey, we can close at the end of February. I mean, that's mm -hmm. an advantage. So, that that and works. they're already approved, we're just waiting on appraisal title. Absolutely. Great strategy, guys. Great strategy. Hey, Joe, I've been seeing a lot more of uh, these Lone Depot commercials down here. So uh, you, you you guys are really, really doing it, man. So yeah, we're turning up our budget. Uh, we're, we're, you'll see more airtime. Um, we just became the official mortgage lender for the Major League Baseball. So we are now their official lender. Um, Quicken took the NFL, they've been the NFL's partner for about five or six years. Uh, that's a quite pricey contract. Um, but uh, we did become the official mortgage lender of Major League Baseball. So you'll start seeing a lot more advertisement uh, at the stadiums and during the games. And uh, we should have a new series of commercials. They're, they're in the works now. So one of the things we did, unlike Quicken, uh, we didn't hire out some large media firm to create our commercials. All of our commercials are actually created, filmed, edited, and everything in-house. Like our marketing department is doing all that themselves, which cut down billions of dollars on our, our budget uh, to, to actually market. And then Anthony, our owner, uh, is extremely intelligent, probably one of the most intelligent men I ever knew. And uh, he is, is, he watches the timing and stuff and he's not paying for those high dollar commercials, prime time. He's strategically placing them where he is getting the most bang for his buck. Super intelligent guy. Uh, he's, he's just amazing. So 
yeah, we're, we are doing a lot more advertising, expect to see more mail campaigns. We're getting more out there, um, you know, started as a little West Coast company, uh, you know, it was a new company 11 years ago, started out in California, and uh, now we're a global company, and we're the second largest non-bank lender uh, in the entire United States. So uh, we just keep growing and growing and growing. Well, congratulations to you guys, and uh, uh, for the new agents that don't that you know don't know, uh, Joe and Sam are with Loan Depot, and they are partners with this company, and. Uh, Sam always, uh, along with Joe, always encourages the agents, hey, if you need to call us at, you know, six, seven o'clock, you know, give us a call and, and we'll, we'll, we'll do whatever. So it's good to have a partnership with a company that's uh, willing to, to work with us after hours. So thanks a lot, Joe. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Right. Have a great week. All right. Thanks a lot, Joe, for the update. So today we're going to talk about... Uh, how we could build your business. And I think that uh, uh, we initially had talked about some, some other things, but what I'm going to talk about too is reasons why we should heavily focus on, on listings in today's mm -hmm. market. And I think that that's really going to, to, to benefit us. Uh, during the last quarter, I know you guys were tired of hearing me talk about how, how to be intentional the last quarter of the year as most as most of us are the first 30 days of the year and here we are already going into uh, the second month of the first quarter so this is where you have agents that have come in and and got some closings in in January and we're we're into February and we should be working on March closings right now so uh, we don't want to wait until January 1st to say hey to get out here and get started because you end up missing the first quarter. But I want to I want to talk about why it's extremely port, important to focus on listings. Um, now, am I saying you can't make money with sales? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that when you focus on listings, you really have a good bit of leverage in today's real estate market. So um, I, I kind of looked and saw who the top producing agents were the end of uh, 2020. And it, the majority of those agents had a, a high number of listings. And when you have a high number of listings, you kind of control a, a lot more in this business. So I kind of looked at one of the agents, Tyler Finley, with, with Houston Homes, he had 155 transactions. And you wonder how can you get that many transactions it is because he had a lot of listings, a whole lot of listings. So when I looked at his figures, he made $46,327,936 off of listings. 46 million off of listings. And in sales, he made six million one hundred and four thousand one hundred and three in sales. That's that's a lot of money. Hey Anthony, that's probably his total sales and total listing, not what he made now. Okay. Absolutely, right? absolutely. It's not what he in pocket made, but you know, as far as the houses that he sold, uh, <clears throat> that's that's what uh, his figures were. So. Thanks, Jim, for clearing that up. I didn't want to think that this dude was <laughs> just doing it like that. Uh, but he he made the most sales uh, in the MLS in 2020. The second person was Roseanne Erickson. She had 163 transactions and she made $42,201,490 on listings. And again, can, can I jump in? Tyler worked for Edgar Houston, Ed Houston Homes. So he's Houston's listing agent. And Roseanne uh, it, it listed all of the. With her husband. I don't know what name they are now, uh, Pinnacle Homes. Or home. Okay. Uh, they changed names so many times and I've forgotten over the years. But, uh, but Roseanne's the listing broker for all those. So that's why they make that kind of money. Absolutely. But it still goes back to. You bet. You bet. 
absolutely. You know, um, they they reap the benefits of that. Uh, so she made forty two million in in listings and made. Can anybody guess how much she made in sales last year? Zero. She made all of her money strictly on listings. So she had zero sales in 2020. Um, and then the, the next person was Melissa Thomas. <clears throat> now, mm -hmm. Melissa only had 63 transactions. And I say only like it's nothing, but uh, she had 63 transactions. She made 17523000 in listings and 10 million. 191 in sales. So again, heavy on listings. The last person that I just noted was Keith and Mary Williams with 75 transactions, 16 million, 16.5 million in listings, 9.2 million in sales. So it's almost like if you control the listings, uh, you can kind of control what the market what the market is doing so am i again am i saying that <clears throat> because you hold the listings don't mean that you can't make great money uh you can be successful uh with sales as well you just become more efficient with your listings so you have more time to do other things um bob bob and gail with our company they did 6.9 million in listings and they did 7.4 million in sales. So they had a really, really super year uh, dealing with buyers. And, and, and I'm sure they worked very hard to do that um, because buyers take a lot of time. Uh, Jackie Leonard made 4.1 million in listings and 6.4 million in sales. Again, uh, you can make money in sales. And Jackie's thing is she's trying to focus more on uh, doing more listings. So, you know, developing a, a good group of people to help her with the sales side so she doesn't have to spend as much time out there and she could focus focus on listings. So uh, we, we, we have to be mindful of that, of saying, hey, you know, let's get these listings. So, as Joe stated, we have a shortage of homes. We have a, he, he's got pre-approved buyers that can't even find a house. Now, what does that say when you have buyers pre-approved and they can't find anything because it's either gone off the market or they, that they just can't find anything? Uh, he said 11 days on market. That, that's, that's amazing, 11 days on market. So um, when you think about the, the, the shortage of homes, then you're coming up to a situation where I've heard agents talk about making multiple offers and still not getting it. You're making multiple offers, you're in a multiple offer situation and, and, and you're offering full price and still lose, <laughs> still don't get it. Uh, but when you, create a multiple offer situation, that also means you create higher commissions as well. So that's more money for us. Uh, but just think about this, this whole pandemic thing. Uh, when you think about the, this, this, when this pandemic hit last year, uh, everybody was, was scrambling for toilet paper. I didn't understand that one, but, uh, huh. You had people trying to get disinfectant wipes and, you know, the biggest thing was Lysol. I mean, everybody was just trying to scrounge to, to, to get those things. It was like a supply and demand type thing. And I mean, even today, I mean, you, you, you can't find Lysol, just, you can't just go to the store and get it. I mean, and we're almost a year end. Uh, but when you do see that, you see notes that say, hey, limit one customer or, or something like that because it's just such high in demand. So I want you guys to think about listings as your Lysol. So you get as many as you can and then you kind of control what's going on. So you got to think of your, your, your listings as, as Lysol. Um, when you have listings, you could 
you could really double your commission and you you find, you wonder how you know Tyler and Roseanne or or Melissa or these people uh, are able to 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 get so much volume is because they hold the listings so <laughs> you get a two in one type deal so you think about this um, you can make money from your listing and if you list it you list it right you're pretty much guaranteed a paycheck um, one of the things that Shep said and he talked to us about was if, if what was it Shep, if you hold one listing, you could go to closing what, like five times or something like that? I think, I think um, if, you, if you have, if you can keep five listings at all times, you can go at least twice a month uh, on those listings. That doesn't include buyers. Absolutely, absolutely. So if you think about it, if you hold just five listings, you can go to closing uh, two times a month. And uh, you know, when you set your goals and you say, hey, that pretty much guarantees you at least 24 transactions for the year uh, at a minimum, you know, and, and maybe more. So we had a lot of new agents to say, hey, my goal is, you know, 20 listings you know, or 20 sales for the year. Well, if you, you focus on those listings, definitely you could do it a lot quicker um, and you could, you could beat that goal. So you'll make money from your listing. You can make money from both sides if, because your sign is out there. So the buyers may be calling you. So you'll make money if you, you are on both sides. And then uh, if that buyer doesn't like that property, you still got a buyer to take somewhere else to, to show them another home. So listings, you know, pretty much kind of guarantees you a two in one type deal. Really, when you think about it, uh, you, you, you double your money when you're, when you're working with, with your listings. Uh, think about this guys. I, and, and I know um, I talked to Delois and she does a lot of uh, social media and things like that. And she gets a lot of, of, of her business there. Uh, but when you think about it, like online, you really can get your marketing in when you have listings, because once you put that listing in the system, it, it pretty much markets it for you because uh, it markets you as the agent. <clears throat> think about this people see your sign and know who you are like you know people I, I introduce myself to people and they're like oh i know you it's like you don't know me you like you know my name because you've seen my name before uh so it's it's not like you you know me but you're you're getting well known you're becoming a household name in this city when you have a lot of listings so it, it gives you from a marketing perspective, it helps. Uh, it's advertisement for your neighbors. When your sign is out in that yard, people have to drive by it every single day if they're in the neighborhood. So uh, I remember where there was a, uh, a study being done and this guy said, hey, I'm just gonna try this farming thing for a second. And uh, he had a listing in a neighborhood and then he started advertising to all of the people in the neighborhood. But what he did is he created a fictitious name like Joe Blow or whatever. And he went back like six months later and he said, hey, he said, I'm just doing a survey in your neighborhood. And if you were deciding to list your home for sale is there any particular agent that you would use and the majority of the people people said this joe blow guy and that's because he had he had a listing in the neighborhood and he he threw the advertisement out there so when neighbors pass by and see your sign that's that's marketing and that's recognition and people know who you are so that's good for advertisement Plus it, it, it puts you on the world wide web. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's not hard, but it's, it's harder to get on the web and talk about sales. Nobody really talks about, you know, sales, so to speak. It's like when you have listings, you put them out there, people see it. When you get it under contract, 
People put it out on social media all the time under contract or sold. Um, so, you know, you're, you're out on Zillow because once you enter that listing into Navica, I mean, guys, it goes everywhere. So you have all this marketing and advertisement for you when it, when it, when it hits the, the web. So you got Zillow, have you out there, realtor.com, you know, the C21, uh, our, our local real estate page um, on Facebook and on the, on the internet. And then we have YouTube videos. So it's like you're everywhere when you have listings and when you, you advertise it. Um, hey, can I make a comment there, Anthony, sure. too? Uh, <laughs> I see frequently on Marketplace and Facebook and other listings, and we've seen it up in Atlanta uh, for years where agents uh, will put stuff on Marketplace on Facebook. The biggest thing that they fail to do is denote the broker's name. Uh, you cannot put anything on Facebook unless you give the credit to your broker. So, and it can't be, it's not supposed to be an abbreviation. It's supposed to be spelled out. So you, you know who I'm talking about now. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but the, the thing is, is it, is it, uh, and I've told, I've been told to a marketing class one time too, uh, by a, a real estate lady that teaches advertising that once they go under, once they go, so you're, you're supposed to take them off. Uh, th that you can show that you're under contract, you can post your soul, but after they're sold and closed, you're supposed to take them off the marketplace because they're no longer available. That's false advertising then. Right. So you just like you know, Jim, uh, and, and I've talked about it in uh, your listing actual contract now states that the owner of that property has to have permission from the broker to actually advertise on social media. So we talked about that and talking about if your, your people want to advertise their, the listing of their home, it would be a great idea for you to just probably do the flyer for them to make sure that uh, it does have the agent and the company name on that because it's required. Because you have to have the company's name and the and or the agent and uh we want to make sure that we're transparent and clear who's selling the property and, and then if you want to get technically correct <laughs> which nobody does the broker's supposed to approve the advertising before it goes goes advertising right yep absolutely i i, I look at it five hours a day Jim. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> So, so absolutely. So, you know, uh, you, you get all of that advertisement. Um, I tell you, Jackie Leonard does an awesome, her team, Jackie Leonard and her team, they do an awesome job at virtual tours. You, you, you're going to see more of that uh, because of the pandemic, but they do an awesome job doing their virtual tours and they put that everywhere. I, you know, I kind of follow Jackie and I see all of these virtual tours. Uh, I follow DeLois at Radiant Real Estate Group. She does these, these awesome uh, pieces of getting pieces of information out to her clients. So it's just things like that, that we have to kind of transition to in order to be successful in, in, in this business. So uh, the virtual tours are good. Um, and, and all this stuff shows that you're successful in this business. It shows that you're a, you're a winner. So um, it's, it's always good to put your listings out there. So people say, well, hey, you know, we trust this person or they trust this person because look how many listings they have out here. You know, this person must be good. So everybody wants to be associated with a winner. So that's a great way to do it is, is by having your listings because they pretty much market for you. So uh, it also saves time and money. And, and, and when you really look at it, your, your time is money in this business. So uh, one of the things that uh, Jackie has decided to do uh, and DeLois as well is you know forming a team. So I think that Jackie wants to spend more time focusing on getting more listings. Uh, so that way her team can assist her with the, the sales side of it. So as, as we talked about the numbers, Jackie had more sales last year than listings, but her goal is to strictly focus more on listings 
uh, so she could she could be more productive. Uh, Mike Ferry always focuses on listings, listings. That's his thing. You got to get out there and get listings. So that's that's where we want to focus as well as far as as far as listing. So let's think about this for a second. When you're working as a seller's agent is which we call it now. Um, we talked about this. How long, how long, Chuck, do you think the, the average time is to meet with a seller going over a listing presentation? I mean, how long does that take? You know, you don't want to make it any more than uh, 30 minutes. Uh, and you want to do your homework on the CMA about an hour or two, but uh, most of your work is up front. And then it's, uh, you know, weekly and biweekly follow up with phone calls. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you think about this, you spend 30 minutes in a home and you get it listed. And really half of your work is just almost done by, by doing that. Because once you get the listing and you put it in the system, then it's going to market itself. It's going to go out to all these different websites. So you have a lot of free time to focus your attention on something on, on, on something different. So your listing presentation is 30 minutes. And when you hold listings, you don't have to be local. When we're working with buyers, we gotta be local. We gotta be here. But with listings, you could be on vacation with your family. You could, you could be in California or Vegas or wherever you wanna be. Um, you don't have to be local with listings. You could still enjoy your family life. You could still enjoy the things that you that you want to enjoy when you hold listings and everybody has to come to you. So uh, you don't have to open the door for inspectors. That's one thing that you know a buyer's agent has to do. They have to open up the door for the inspector and you have to sit there for, well, some people sit there for the entire inspection, but People like Jim, he probably opens the door and, and heads out. So, uh, but you have to be there for the inspections and then you have to do the amendment to address concerns. So it's a lot of things that you have to do as a buyer's agent that takes up your time. Um, and when you're showing property as a buyer's agent, you know, you may show property three hours and they don't make a decision that day. And then you have to go out again and again and again. So you, you guys get my point of, of being a listing agent. You actually don't have to, to be in town. You can, you can enjoy your family. Um, and, and like Shep said, you only have to give updates weekly or biweekly. And I notice when I have listings, if I call the, the, the seller before they call me, it's a three to five minute call, if that. So it's pretty much, hey, just want to give you a weekly update. We had, you know, four showings this week. Uh, no serious buyers. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll update you next week. How's everything going? All right, talk to you next week. Or if it's biweekly or however, you know, you set up your communication. It's usually a three to five minute phone call. So that's saving you time. And if you price it right, just like I stated before, it's a guaranteed sale. You price it right, it's a guaranteed sale. Joe talked about listings being on uh, 11, 11 days was the average time on market. So it gets you to the quick the, the closing table a lot quicker as well if you price it right. Um, and that's a guaranteed check. Uh, and, and this is for, you know, some people that, um, you know, this pandemic has kind of kind of shaking them or they they don't want to really get out as much as they did you know of course for health reasons and health concerns uh but when you have listings it keeps you safe i mean you don't you don't necessarily have to to be out in the hustle and bustle so uh, you get your listings and uh, you don't really have to interact that much in you know with driving people around or whatever so it keeps you safe it keeps you from having to show houses if you don't want to. Um, I know some agents have kind of pulled back from just being out there um, and doing as much business, but if you're big on listings, 
you can still build your business and be very successful. I just showed you numbers where Roseanne Erickson made $46 million and she had zero sales. So, and she still did very well. But if you focus on listings, you could still do great in this market. Um, if you're, you know, concerned about the pandemic and, you know, not getting out and it also limits your, your interaction. So uh, you want to kind of keep that in mind. The last thing I want to touch on is when you control the market, everybody has to come to you. Uh, you, you in fact, hold the big stick. So uh, when you control the market, you kind of control what everybody does and, and they have to come to you uh, for information and things of that nature. I, I remember a couple of years back, I was just thinking about uh, Roseanne Erickson. She used to, uh, she, you know, her and Dave had so many listings out there in so many neighborhoods that you practically had to deal with them. And it was things that some agents didn't like where we, they, USAA, they, they got to the point where USAA weren't closing deals and they put in their contracts to say, if you use USAA and it doesn't close in X amount of days, we're gonna charge you $50 a day or whatever. And everybody thought that that was crazy, but what did we do? We had to conform to it because they had the listings. And if you wanted to do business with them, you had to conform. It was the same thing with uh, when a sister sale came around. Nobody liked a sister sale. Everybody was upset because they were a discount broker and they were hurting our commissions. You know, they, they, they were doing a flat fee or whatever. And everybody was upset with with Chris when he brought a sister sale to Columbus and, but he was getting a lot of listings and agents were getting mad, but there was nothing that we could do about it because, you know, he started holding the listings and people were going to him. So those were just kind of a couple of things in reference to, you know, everyone has to come to you and conform to you. So you kind of determine what, what goes on. Uh, you kind of determine the market value a little bit too. Uh, you go back to when I was showing the numbers with Melissa Thomas and she had 63, 63 transactions, but her average sales price is a lot, a lot more. So she's, she's selling higher dollar homes and you'll notice that on her listings, uh, the same with Keith and Mary Williams at times where they could ask for more and people were paying more for their listings. So you kind of determine the market value and you can kind of control it with listings. So I, one of my sayings is you list to last and you sell to eat. So that's one of my sayings, you list to last, you sell to eat. So keep that in mind as far as listings. I want the last thing I want to talk to you guys about, and I know we're out of time here, is um, I, I want you guys to, especially the newer agents, to think about this as your business. Uh, you want to not just look at it as you going out and doing listings and, and sales. You are a walking, talking business. You are your own business. And I always use Century 21 the nationwide company only gives Center 21 Premier the tools to be successful, but it's up to Shep, Alex, and, and our entire leadership team to be mm -hmm. successful. That's it's totally up to us. And what Century 21 Premier as a company does is give every Century 21 agent the tools to be successful. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to be successful. Just like Century 21, the franchise is a business. Century 21 Premier is a business. You as an individual agent is your business and your employees are your sphere of influence. You, you could get an LLC. I, I want you to get that mindset of you are a business. You, you can have tax write-offs. And I think Alex is going to talk about uh, or have someone to talk about S corps and all of that stuff, how you can uh, incorporate yourself. I think that's this month, isn't it, Shep? 
Yes, it, it is going to be this month. Yeah. yeah. So this is things that we're, we're wanting to talk to you about to help build your business, but you are your own business uh, and you have to treat it like that. If you're not working, your business is closed. If you're working, hey, you know, you have to treat it exactly like a business. So I hope there's something that, you know, I may have said today uh, to help you have more of a business mindset, to help you in this 2021 year, uh, do great this year. So whatever we could do to, to assist anybody, um, we're just only a phone call away. And when you have owners uh, and brokers that are willing to focus their time and energy on helping you build the, your business, like guys, that's a blessing. You have other companies here where the owners are the top producers. <laughs> so we know who, who that is as well. But uh, this leadership team really wants to focus on helping you build your business. Uh, Shep and Alex focus a lot of time on getting information to bring to uh, us as a, as a company. Uh, Alex did something on the PPP loan uh, just last week or two weeks ago, but it's just things like that to help us become successful. And we want to be uh, an avenue to help you be successful because when you're successful, the company is successful. So that's all I have, Shep. Is there anything that you want to add to take away or whatever? Yeah, Anthony, we'll talk about how to get those listings. Absolutely. So, uh, and, but and also you need to work on your listing presentation, making it strong. But, Absolutely. Uh, that, that was a that was a great uh, was a great uh, content you had today. I thought. Yeah, and 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 our newer agents are focusing on that. So that we we had Akiva to to do one. I think Falana is going to do one this week. Uh, but we're working heavily on them and their marketing presentation and uh, all of us are doing well, but I, I, I'm just so proud of the new agents uh, that, that are with this company because they're hitting the ground running. And, and we've picked up some agents that have been in the business a year and hadn't made one sale until they've come to us. So uh, I appreciate Shep what you and Alex do and, and, and everybody else in making this company successful. And I'm proud to be a part of it. Good to, uh, proud to have you with us, Anthony. Great job. Great job today. Uh, I think uh, Alia was on the call. Alia, did you want to say a few things? Sure. Thank you, guys. And I want to say I said in the chat, too, that you guys are amazing coaches and mentors. And, um, you know, I work with a lot of brokers all over Georgia, and I just see how much time and and how much you invest in resources for your agents. And I'm, I'm always impressed by that. So I know that some agents may not have been in, in another brokerage, but you guys are very, very lucky to be in Century 21. Um, I wanted to say really quickly, and I hope Anthony's okay with this. He called me yesterday and said, you know, he's got a 210 warranty on his home. And he said, you know, I filed a claim and it's been a few days. I'm unable to get a hold of someone. Is this how it's supposed to go? And so I wanted to let you guys know that, you know, it's not always going to go the way it should. If that ever happens, if your clients call you, if they text you, if they have discomfort, give me a call because I was able to send that up to my elevated claims team, have someone call in that evening and make sure that we get an appointment with another uh, provider. So don't hesitate to reach out to me if there's anything that seems like an issue, uh, that's exactly why I'm here. So I'll post my number in the chat, but you guys always let me know if you need anything. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I just want to, I want to add to that too, um, mm -hmm. because Alia had mentioned something to me that I wasn't even aware of when I purchased the house. And she said, Hey, Anthony, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but we have, uh, and I can't remember what it was called, Alia, but basically when you purchase your new home, you basically can go out and buy new locks and they'll reimburse you up to $100 for uh, new door locks. So can you kind of talk to them about that just briefly, Alia? Sure, thank you. It's a, it's a great benefit for our buyers. I think it really sets us apart, um, 210 Home Warranty in the market. 
Um, your buyers usually are going to go in and change their locks or do reiki immediately as soon as they get into the home. Uh, 210 found that, you know, other companies, you would make an appointment with them for someone to come change the locks. But the big complaint from the buyers was we want to do it ourselves right away. So when you move into your home, all you do is go ahead and purchase that, pay the locksmith, register with 210 online and send those receipts to us. We will reimburse up to $100. So you just get a check in the mail. It's so simple. There's no real action required on the part of the buyers to call, make an appointment. <laughs> Excuse me. Or wait. It's a, it's a very simple process and our buyers love it. So I benefited from that and I got a check in the mail. So it, it actually works. And I was, I was super excited and I would have otherwise not even known about it. Uh, so uh, she told me about that and she's correct. Uh, I had an issue with something in my house and I, I started to get frustrated about it. And I said, you know what? Why am I not benefiting from the partnership that we have with 210? So I called Alia and it, I know it was after hours. It had to be about 6.30 or so um, when, I, when I called her and she was like, hey, let me escalate this. Let me, this is not how it's supposed to go, Anthony. I'll do whatever I can to, to help out. And by the time I left this office to get to old Chicago to meet with Alex and Shep and some of the agents, I got a phone call. And that person said, hey, we're on it. We've already reassigned you to another person. They should be reaching out. Here's my personal number. If you don't hear from them by this time tomorrow, call us again and let us know. And I was like, wow, one phone call to Alia and she got the ball rolling. So it's awesome. good to have those benefits uh, a part of this company with the partnerships that we have. So I thank you so much for that, Alia. Thank you for sharing that, Anthony. And, um, you know, we have a dedicated team and please know that our partnership is important to 210. When you call 210, they will know who you are. So, you know, we have a dedicated team that helps me. And that's true. If they call your client and your client has an issue, they'll get a direct phone number. They'll know the person's name and they won't have to call the 800 number for the rest of that claim. We'll stay on them until it gets resolved. Absolutely. Hey, hey Anthony, Anthony. Yes. Hey, Anthony, Jed, how you doing? Uh, uh, two things real quick. Ali, are you still there? I am. Ali? Okay, good. Guess what I will close on tomorrow? What's that? What do you, the one oh that you gosh, lived. Oh my are you 16, 17? 16, 17, Winton Road. Tomorrow we're closing on it. What are Hallelujah. they going to do with it? It's going to be an Airbnb. So oh, anyway. that's a good but, idea. Yeah, I, I knew you'd be interested. Uh, Anthony, <laughs> let me, let me pr since we're talking about inventory, I have a listing in Winfield, which, you know, is directly across from Beaver Run. It's uh, 7177 West Winfield Loop. It's uh, listed a little bit above the market, but the owner realizes what it should sell for. So I just wanted to go ahead and promote that while, we're all on this Zoom call. So 7177 West Winfield Loop. Uh, I don't want to talk. About, well, it's listed at 336, but honestly, it the market, and we had the agent open house a few months ago. Shep was there, and uh, the general consensus is that it should sell between 295 and 300. Uh, it's, the owner has moved to California. The house is vacant. It has a realtor lockbox on it. It's in, it is truly in move-in condition. I mean, it's new carpets, nice hardwood floors, two-car garage. Um, but anyway, so I just wanted, since, you know, and that the Midland area is a very hot area right now, much demand in that area. So, so anyway, but bring us an offer and uh, just wanted to promote that one, so. Okay. Anybody else have any uh, any listings? Thanks, Jed. Sure thing. Anybody else have any listings that they want to discuss? All right. Well, all hearts and minds clear. So uh, 
I guess we'll close out. Thank you guys for always tuning in. And if there's anything that uh, this company can do to help you, me personally, Shep or Alex, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And we thank you for tuning in. Talk to you guys Good later. Good program. Good All program. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.